Over to you. Okay, thank you, and welcome to everybody. We're, um, I'm Mary Preston, and I've been part of the Energy Breakthrough team for quite some time, first as a, a parent, and uh, now I'm currently the triathlon coordinator. So I've been here a long time. Um, we have actually today about 200 students joining us on, online. So it's fantastic, from about 16 stu schools across the state, and we hope that many more will join us later. And we do have today in the, in, uh, the theatre, it's from Victory College. So welcome. Uh, we have to acknowledge too um, RACV Energy Breakthrough Partner Organisations. We've got the Country Education Partnership and the Central Goldfield Shire Council. So welcome and thank you everybody for taking time to be online with us today. But our host today and sponsor is La Trobe University, who sponsor particularly the display and presentation aspect of the program. Now, during this session, it's actually about getting ready for the event. We've really only got three weeks to go, but we're getting ready for the final bits. And today, I'm going to be joined shortly by three special guests who will be able to assist you in those last few weeks in getting prepared. And then we will close with a discussion with one of our new lead scrutineers, Mick McTeague, about the technical aspects for both this year and next year. So now there is live chat available online, so pose your questions there and hopefully we'll get a chance to cover them a little later. Nigel will have that uh, little point there on the webinar. Um, now. I'd like to introduce Rob Stevenson, Head of La Trobe University Bendigo, to stay, uh, say a few words on behalf of the university. Thanks for joining us, Rob. Thank you. Busy Thanks. time. Thanks, Mary. Uh, so, how does the La Trobe University and Energy Breakthrough link together? So, so Energy Breakthrough is really important to us. Firstly, though, I'd, I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting in Bendigo on Jara country and pay my respects to elders past and present of the Jaja Rung people. Uh, who've been custodians of the land on which we meet for many centuries. And I would also like to extend that to the elders and, and people, customers. It's, it's fantastic. Um, it's great that you could all be here either in person or, or virtually at, at La Trobe in Bendigo today. Um, the energy breakthrough is, is really important to us. And in fact, I, one of the reasons why it's actually important is um, I've been at a meeting of the Bendigo Manufacturers Group this morning. Um, and we were talking about energy breakthrough there and, and some of the manufacturers were talking about how important it is for students to, to learn the skills that you get in energy breakthrough, the project management skills, the ability to work in teams, the ability to plan and, and get ready and you know, build up across a year. And, and so employers really value the sorts of skills that students learn mm, as mm. part of yeah. being involved with energy breakthrough and, mm. and really that's that's what it says to us as well, that, that we think that the, the skills that students learn before they get to university are really important and, mm. and give them a real head start when they, when they actually get here because when you come into university it's different from the school environment and you, you actually have to um, yeah, not, have, not have teachers yelling at you to do things all the time, it's actually about what you can do for yourself, mm. be organised, yeah. self-management, mm. um, time management, all those sorts of things yes. which are really important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, of course, that, that's really important for, for the modern world and, and will be increasingly important are the STEM skills, science, mm. technology, yeah. engineering, mathematics and, and arts, the, the design and, um, and all those sorts of things which are increasingly an important part of mm. jobs of the future and, um, and the way that we're trying to structure our programs is to, to recognise that um, you know, they're really important skills in no matter whatever jobs you go into. Mm, um, mm. There's a lot of work being done at the moment, you know, people are talking about all the jobs that will be lost to robots yes. and, and actually the, a lot of jobs will be changed by robots. It's yes. going to be the, the skills that people learn to learn and work with technology mm. but also have the other skills. So mm. um, we think that Energy Breakthrough actually picks up mm -hmm. on all those skills yeah. and, and we've been really proud to, to be involved for a number of years now and, and to have increased our, our involvement recently. So thank really you. Really important. Yes, and thank you for being there too. Thank you very Thanks, much. Man. Thanks Rob. And right. uh, we'll better move on. And right. we'll, I think it'll come through too with the other people that we speak to about how much 
what we're doing here in Energy Breakthrough comes through in the yeah. mic as well in the expertise of the uh, work and everything. So Fantastic. thank you very much for that. All right. I hope you have a, a great day today and I look forward to seeing you in Mariborough in three, three weeks, weeks' time. Three wow. weeks. All right. Yes. Thank Good. you. Thank you. Right. Now we have our three guests coming along. So if we can find a spot for them. Thank you. So we have Simon O'Mellon, who's a lecturer in university at the University in Design and uh, Technology. Matt uh, Twin, thank you, technician at Bendigo Tech School, and you'll be able to explain a little bit later, yeah, Matt, where you are. Is. Yeah. And Natalie Hurst, who is a basketballer, seven-time. Women's Netball uh, Basketball League Champion with the Canberra Capitals, but now, as you can see, she's joined us down here at the Bendigo Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for coming along. Okay. So, the um, assessment here uh, we're going to cover here because Energy Breakthrough is actually the one and only schools only education program, only for schools. So it's designed, as we heard before, to challenge you and your teammates in everything from public speaking, energy, energy engineering, and physical fitness. So it's done across the three assessment areas. We've got display and presentation, design and construction, and the trial. So we've got it all here. So each aspect, though, has got a certain value. So we've got display and presentation worth about 25% of the team's overall score. Design and construction is 25% and the trial is worth 50. So we'll get into it. Simon, going back to display and presentation. Okay, so what's noticeable about a really good presentation? What do you think, Simon? So, uh, the, the first thing the first thing that you look for is confidence so so basically you've got three weeks um, left to get ready um, and the, the first thing I'd ask is hands up everybody who's nervous when they're speaking yes and you out there too I can see you. everybody is nervous when they're speaking so the idea is you have to pretend you have to pretend to be confident and what you'll find is um, amazingly enough you will be confident um, then uh, you have to rehearse um, uh, all of your work. Basically, in teams, you're going to have all of the different sections that your presentation needs to talk about. So in teams, figure out which part of the process of the event that you're passionate about, and then you speak on that bit. So work that out in your teams. That way you're more enthusiastic and more confident. Um, the next thing is, if you stand there and read from a piece of paper, that will look really obvious. So, little folded up uh, dot points in your hand, cue cards, big writing so you can read it. Um, and what we're looking for is that you understand all of, all of the, uh, uh, the involvement and the meaning behind what you're doing. Like, why do you need to know about nutrition? Um, what did you find out about the vehicle? So the engineering and the science of it. And um, in terms of the presentations, uh, don't be too loud. So lots of times we find people play music, do big dance songs and everything. No, everybody else is trying to present at the same time. So just stick to your information uh, and, and be quite, um, quite real about it visual presentation is really important. So um, a couple of A4 pictures behind your back, that won't tell us anything about what you know. Take the time to make posters and make something interesting so that when the judges are looking at it, they can see there's the journey that you've taken to get to the EB. Yeah? Um, and uh, let's see, rehearse rehearse what you're going to say um, over and over again because then you'll get a lot more confident uh, and uh, the time, so you have a specific time limit, keep it within that, rehearse some more and, and remember whatever you don't say is not said. 
you get more points out of your presentation. Um, uh, so the points, the points out of the presentation are highly valuable um, for your laps. So points first, laps later. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Now people might have made um, points about this, you know, as they're going because uh, they're busy talking. But you have got the notes there yep. of this on the to be able yes, to pick so, up on the web. So um, uh, we figured that you um, wouldn't be writing notes mm. as we're talking. So uh, on the webinar, Nigel has kindly put up um, these points, and the dot points will just tell you rehearse, rehearse again, mm -hmm. know your stuff, and. Um, Introverts and extroverts, so lots of people, everybody is a mix of introverts and extroverts, yeah? And lots of people are introverted, oh, I'm so shy and I really don't want to talk, yep. So here's your opportunity in this speaking engagement to fake it, to pretend to be extroverted. Awesome. Go for it. Sounds good. Sounds positive. Yep, I've got a few heads nodding there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anything that we need to avoid in a, a presentation? You know, yeah, don't, yes. don't be sloppy. Oh. Hands in pockets, leaning up against things, and like, oh, I'm too cool to be able to present men, so like, you know, yeah. you should just know this stuff anyway. Um, so uh, don't be sloppy, be professional. Um, don't be too loud or disruptive for other people mm -hmm. presenting. So really keep that in mind. Make sure you cover everything. Look at your criteria and cover all of the criteria and rehearse it and nail it uh, and have a lot of fun. Mm. That's really mm. big. Mm. Yeah, important. Um, and one of the other things that we've found too over the years that um, usually electronic devices are not really appropriate with the outdoor setting, you can't see them, you know, um, yeah. the computer screen and that. So we just try and go. And your idea of posters <laughs> and that is really good. It's, <laughs> it's great with the electronic stuff. So yeah. imagine yourself standing in a paddock looking at a laptop. <laughs> you can't <laughs> see anything. No. <laughs> so posters are a good idea. They are, yeah, good. Now, you've had actually quite a few um, Latrobe students. Um, going through your course, yeah. and then they've been up and they've been um, part of it has been to come and judge or um, be part of the energy breakthrough. So their response when they've done it. So <coughs> part of what we do here at the university is teacher education. So we're teaching people to be teachers, and for me, the engagement of of design and technology, of science, of curiosity, of art, of all of those skills is like really, really valuable. So we encourage some of the teachers to come and be judges at the event uh, and they come along going, oh yeah, that would be good. Mm. And they always come away going, oh my God, that's amazing. Because the energy breakthrough with the presentations and the whole event um, mirrors or, or let's say uh, uh, represents the best of teaching and learning of integrated subjects. So you've got your you've got your literacy, your numeracy, your science. You know, like everything is coming together. So for us, the um, uh, the students, our judges who come along, they just have an amazing time, and most of them return the following year, and all of them talk about once they get a job in a school. They want that school to engage in the energy breakthrough uh, and take it on board because it's so important. Yes, yes. In, within the triathlon, I know I've got a few people, yeah. managers now, who've gone to a school because they've been involved as mm. a, a student teacher and then come back and said, oh, we've got to get involved. So it is fantastic. So thanks, Simon. Thank Pleasure. you. Okay, so oh, thank you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> So, Matt, yeah. yeah, you're working in design and construction area, but first of all, you've got the Bendigo Tech School. You better tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. You, can you do that just yeah, briefly? briefly? I'll try. Yes. I'll try to briefly. <laughs> okay. So, the Bendigo Tech School is one of ten tech schools around Victoria, mm -hmm. and it's a collaboration between uh, the Department of Ed 
and a bunch of tertiary institutions all around Victoria. Uh, the Bedio one is with uh, the Trove University. Mm. Uh, which right is what next we, door. Yeah, yes, right next door. Yeah. Fantastic new building, um, just been opened, really mm. exciting. Um, we're sort of going in there and, and doing things, it's, it's great. But we've got a heap of really cool technology. Um, heap of new, new stuff, robotic uh, 3D printers, we've got robotic cutters. We've got robotic arms. There's a theme going on here. Mm, mm, um, and mm. that is kind of, yeah, okay, the future's coming. The robots probably yes. are going to steal your jobs. But it, now we're going to teach you how to program the robots, mm. you know, mm. how, to, how to master that. Mm. So preparing uh, people for the future rather than just letting the future wash over people. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, very exciting. Anyone? Mm. Yes, I've got a few heads nodding here. You might have a few visitors. You might bring them back on. Okay, so honing into the energy breakthrough, yeah. it is really about um, design and construction and the testing of it, you know, yeah. the testing components, yes. Yeah, so yeah, so can you give us some ideas and thoughts about what managers and that can hone in on there, please? Sure, totally. Yeah. So it's, it's super important to test stuff, mm. um, but we're only three weeks away from mm. the event, so you can't destructively test stuff. You can't go and take your, you know, your roll hoop, for instance, and take your car two metres up and drop it, because you know, that would be a great test to see how strong your roll hoop is. But if you do that three weeks out from the event, you're not going to be able to rebuild it. So what we're looking at this stage is little testing, little tweaks. And there's a bunch of really cool stuff out there yeah. to allow you to do that. Uh, there are a bunch of phone apps. So, um, previous to, to work at the tech school, I used to build um, GPS tracking devices for elite sport teams, like Manchester United and Arsenal, a lot of, lot of the European um, football teams. And these things were incredibly uh, accurate GPS devices with accelerometers, and they used for performance management mm -hmm. for those teams. Um, but all that technology exists in a smartphone, mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of apps out there you can use to gather data and use that data to work mm -hmm. out, okay, if I go a gear up, how does that work? Does that make me faster in the long run if I, versus going a gear down? And you know, all this sort of thing. And okay. you know, amateur athletes across the world are using these apps to gain those little little bits of advantage. Yes, yes. Yeah. Ah, right. Okay, so I'm quite sure that most of these people out here are quite good on their phone and yep. they can teach probably their um, managers how mm -hmm. to find them. Oh, and quite possibly. Help them. Yes. The, yep. the important thing with these apps though is you have to remember that if they're offering you a service for free, yes. what are they doing with your data? Mm -hmm. and, that, mm -hmm. and that comes with the other thing. There's a, a really nice example recently, uh, there's an app called Strava mm -hmm. and Strava collects your GPS information and um, gives you back your performance statistics. Uh, but what they found is some, an Australian researcher took this, all this data, put it together, and they found um, there were users in Pyongyang in North Korea mm. where there aren't meant to be. Mm. So it was obviously a foreign agent mm. in Pyongyang just jogging laps. And they found secret army bases mm. in Afghanistan. Oh. And they found all this <laughs> stuff from data that wasn't meant to like, be shared. Yes, yes. So by all means, go out and use these apps, but know yes. where your data's going. Right. Very yeah. good point, regardless of just the energy breakthrough. But anyway. Yes, yes, absolutely. Good, good. Have you got a simple process for just in this three weeks that you can yeah. um, suggest for people yeah. to look at? when they're doing their testing and, and learning, something simple that Mick up here can do for the, um, as a teacher here oh. with um, Victoria. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Um, yeah, so testing can be as simple as um, pedaling up, put your, your car on a stand, pedal up to a certain speed, stop pedaling and just time how long the rear wheel spins, find out how good your bearings are, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. sort of thing, mm. um, through to uh, aerodynamic testing. Uh, there's, again, there's apps out there mm. to do that. There's a really great one called Wind Tunnel, mm. where you can just draw shapes and you can look at how the air flows around you just using a phone app. Right. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay, and we better move on to Natalie. It's been fantastic that you're able to come, Natalie. Um, so, perhaps going back a little bit there, when you were young, were you the, the girl who was always going to be the basketballer, or did you have any other ideas and... 
and uh, what you would like to do? What was always basketball? Um, <laughs> I think, you know, if I think to the 13 year old me, yeah. um, I was playing a few sports then. Yes. Um, yeah. And it got to the point where it was obvious that basketball was probably a little bit better for me. Right. Um, so I had to decide, do I just play all these sports or do mm. I just focus on basketball if I want mm. to try and make something out of it? Um, mm. So I chose to, to focus on, on basketball back then okay. at that age and uh, yeah, worked my way up through the Canberra representative teams and, and luckily enough to the, the National League, which I'm playing in now. And, now. and you've played overseas as well? I've played overseas. I've played uh, seven, seven seasons. I've played in France, Hungary, Poland and, and Turkey yeah. as well. Right. So I've been lucky enough to, to yeah. see a lot of the world as, as, as the with same. my sport, with doing something you love. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so obviously we've got some girls and pretty competent girls playing basketball. Uh, anything, any little pointers that you think about encouraging girls? I mean, we've got, we're great. We've got some men, lots of girls here um, today. I, you know, I think it's, it, it's, you know, important to, you know, encourage both, both mm. girls and boys mm. Um, mm. To, to play a sport, not just to, just to, to be active. Um, mm. I think that's important and to be part of a team. Mm. Um, I love being part of a team. I think that's what's kept me going for so long in my career is I, I feel like I have 12 sisters when I when I get to practice yes. and an extra dad as a coach and and just to, to have that extra family um, I think yes. that's what's kept me going for so long and yeah. that I just love being around around my, my team I got you know a teammate yes. here yes. and uh, yes. it's just it's great I think I've got one of the best jobs in the world that yes. I get to, to hang out with 12 friends that I call yes. sisters and and get to do that as a job fantastic um, when we get to the energy breakthrough one of the important um, aspects is nutrition um, a lot of these kids are probably doing the 24-hour race, um, so a good basis for them to work with. Um, hydration, I would say, is oh, yes. you know, super yeah. important. I, the first thing I do in the morning, is I wake up and, and have a glass of water. It mm -hmm. not only makes me feel good, it gets the brain going, it, mm -hmm. it, it wakes you up and um, you need to replace yes. the sweat that you're losing, you need to replace that with, with, with water and uh, that's one of the major things that you know I do every day. Yeah. Um, I would say just being prepared. Um, during the week, I would usually high, you know, vegetables, fruits, and, and proteins. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of carbs, mm -hmm. but 48 hours before a game, I know that I that's when I carbo load okay. to make sure that for the game two days later, my body's ready to go. Yes. Um, and then that's probably with my nutrition in there. It's always, you know. If you, if you look after yourself for six days of the week, I always have the, the seventh day where I let myself have something a little bit naughty. So um, oh, as long as I've oh, eaten good for six days, yes. I think it's okay to, to give yourself a little bit of a break yeah. one day and, and, okay. and have something that you, you've been craving or that you enjoy. Mm. Okay, so Sunday will be Sunday's the day. Sunday's the day. Sunday, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be the day. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, any particular lessons that you've learnt from the national and, you know, and obviously European competition that we could... You, any little tips that you could pass um, on? Not much more than what I've spoken about. Yeah, I think it just yeah. becomes more important um, as my as I got older and as my career went on. Mm. How hydration, how nutrition, mm. how sleep. Sleep super mm. important. Um, mm. That's probably the best recovery that you can get is, is your sleep. So I think not that I've learnt extra stuff as, as I've gone through my career, but just how yeah. it's become more important to me as as I've gotten a little bit older and, and just making sure that I look after my body. Yeah. Good. Oh, sleep is an interesting factor. Yes, uh, um, I know we've been managers and taking kids along. Sleep is an important thing, even though they're very exciting, and so <laughs> it is difficult over that weekend to get them to sleep. Now, uh, have we had any questions on uh, live chat? Yeah, there's one. Uh, one come through about the presentation. Right. So, is there anything uh, visually that you can say will make a big impact? One thing schools could do oh. there. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Large pictures, easy to read that show your journey. So yeah, we want to see um, uh, images of the team working together, um, how they're preparing themselves, uh, exercising, how they're preparing the vehicle, you know, uh, images of uh, nutrition, what are the foods they're having. So really good information that at a glance, you can go, these people mm -hmm. are on the ball. Mm -hmm. They know their stuff. Mm -hmm. Very good. And a question, a technical question. So uh, next along the line, you get to have this one. Um, some, some people are concerned they haven't used really advanced materials like carbon fibre or anything like that. Do you think that's a, a big issue or do you think actually some really simple materials are okay? 
Um, no, 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 simple materials are fine. Um, you, know, you look at look at the world of uh, mountain bikes, for instance. People are still riding steel mountain bikes, mm -hmm. and they're doing great things with them. You know, there are people who are winning championships on steel mountain bikes still, and especially the single speed world. Um, so materials aren't everything. Um, if you're a good athlete, especially, um, you know, all materials are in as an excuse. Mm. Yeah. Very good. And this was my own question. I'll chuck it in. Natalie, was there anything you've eaten that's really disagreed with you in the past? Oh, Something okay. bad where you've just gone, oh, I won't eat a burger and chips before a game. <laughs> Probably a burger and chips before a game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Probably no. hasn't given me the, the right energy that I've needed. Um, I probably have tried it and it, I definitely haven't gone back to it. So, yeah. right, yes. Good. Yeah. Stick away from that one. Any questions from the room? Yeah, I was have we floored them? Their expertise? They may come up with some. Yeah. Yes, no, we do. Natalie, what kind of foods do you eat, like, um, for nutrition? Like, I'm sure some of these students would be interested to know, like, exactly what you would be eating. Uh, during the week, I eat a lot of fruit and vegetables and, and protein, so I eat a lot of chicken. Um, a little bit of red meat, because, you know, the body needs that. Um, and then, like I said, two days before a match, I probably eat a big, big bowl of pasta, um, just to get those carbos in. I, I, I don't actually eat a lot of carbohydrates during the week. Um, I feel like the body doesn't need a whole lot. It actually makes me feel more heavy than energised. Um, I feel like the chicken and proteins like that get me through through the week until, the, like I said, the two days before the match. A big bowl of pasta. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah, pasta actually is a very common thing that energy breakthrough. Right, do you agree, Fitz? Yes, I think yeah, there's a few nodding managers yeah. with that. Good backup. So, um, just if we can go back through the three. Um, we've just got three weeks to go. We're not re getting panicked, we're just remaining calm. But are there three things that you reckon for the display and presentation that we could just highlight and do in that time? Yes. So, yeah. Practice being confident. Mm. Fake it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, check your timing yeah. uh, and, and rehearse. Like really rehearse in front of um, other people uh, as a team so that it's really slick uh, and uh, pick things that are enthusiastic for you to talk about because we want to see that you're engaged. Mm. Yeah. And, 20, and your timing is good because it's a 20 minute oh, session. The t how it works is yeah. you'll be going blah, 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 and we'll go thank you very much because mm. that's it, your time's up. Mm. So whatever's not said is not said, that's where you lose points. So practice it, rehearse it, get it slick. Yes, yes, right. Matt, any... Three weeks out from the event? Yes. Um, yeah, have enough spares on the day. Oh, there, is, right. there is nothing worse than going through a brake pad and not having a spare. Um, spare tubes, Good spare tyres if you need yeah. them. Um, have that change, have that stuff there. and. Mm practice knowing how to change stuff quickly because any time that your car's off the track it's off the track mm, mm. Um, so that that's super important yeah. um, on the day uh, getting your lap times a day and seeing what changes make what difference to lap times is good on the day mm. but if you can get that data beforehand mm -hmm. and work out what changes are beneficial do it beforehand good good thanks Natalie mm. um, I think you know what I've covered is you know yeah. hydration sleep coming up to up mm. the event, because I'm sure, you know, the night before, everyone's yes, going to be a little bit nervous. Um, Thank you nutrition, like we've talked about, yeah. and, and maybe just if, I know, the young and healthy bodies, but if there's any little niggly injuries that anyone's carrying, oh, right. to get that checked out before the day, because you yes. don't want to, you know, yeah. have, a, have a sore hand coming up to it, and then get to the day, yes. and, and not be able to, to perform how you want, because, you, you know, you yeah. sore hand that you haven't had checked. So, yeah. anything like that will probably okay. help out. Yeah, good points. Okay. Oh, Natalie, I have a question. Um, mm. What if you struggle getting to sleep? If there's some kids that get excited before an event, um, mm. do you have any great um, tricks of ways of trying to get to sleep? Mm. Not going to lie, I'm not the best sleeper. Um, I actually find it hard to get to sleep at night time. I actually have to watch TV to put myself to sleep. Um, mm. So I don't actually have any great answers for you. Um, Probably just trying to relax your mind before you go to sleep. So not, so I know it's hard to when you're coming up to an event to not, not be thinking about the event, but whatever, you, if there's something that relaxes you that you can think about, that yes. just kind of switch switch off maybe 
the night before an event and, and try to, to, to think about something else. Um, yeah. Whether it's a, a place you like to go to, you know, your family, anything like that, just to switch your mind off, it, it often helps you you'll be able to get to sleep. Um, uh, one thing that works really well is have a book to read that's an interesting story that's got nothing to do with the energy breakthrough and, um, and what you'll find when you read the same page four times and you still don't know what the words mean, it's time it's to sleep. sleep. <laughs> <laughs> good point, good point. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, no more questions from anyone here? Yes, um, how much fitness should we be doing before coming up to the race? Good question. Um, hopefully you've been doing a little bit of fitness. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure how, I don't even know how long the, how the distance of the race. 24 hours. 24 so hours. It's a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they're not racing all the time, but there is a you know, good hour, couple of hours. Yeah. You probably need to get in at least an hour per day coming up to the event, um, mm -hmm. if, you can, right. if you can get that in. Um, yes. Even half an hour. Anything, anything now is better than, better than nothing. Um, you're going out for a run, you're beating the person sitting on, a, on the couch at the end of the day. So you know, anything that you can put in, any, time, any spare time you have, I'll just be getting that in and doing as much as you can before the event. Yeah. What about just the two days before the event, like just before the event? Yes. Yeah. What sort of exercise do you want to do? I would be resting your body just before the event. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, we prepare from a basketball point of view. We prepare all week, the day, mm -hmm. day and a half before the game. That's when we need to just we back off a little bit and, and and let the body let the body rest and to be yes. prepared. You don't want to hammer, 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 and then yeah. try and get to the event and and, and be and be super tired. So. Rest is that's why rest is really important as well. So you want to you want to have your fitness coming into the event, but you want to make sure that you, you get your little bit of rest before the event starts. Yes, yeah, good point. No other questions. No. We've had some others, yes, but they've actually we been have covered. Yeah. I was just wondering, what's your personal opinion on, say, power aids, um, mm -hmm. pre-workouts, things like that? Because I know there's a lot of controversy around it. But what's your personal? Opinion? Yeah. I use pre-workouts. Um, for myself, I feel like they well, for the days that I feel like I need them. Um, I don't use them every day because I don't feel like my body needs a, a pre-workout to get me going every day. But I am an older athlete, so some days it is a little bit harder. Um, Power aids, Gatorades, I stick away from. I feel like they're too high in sugar. Um, but I know that there are other other athletes that really like them. So it's it's really personal preference. It's if you use it, how does it make you feel? Does it help? Because if it doesn't help, I wouldn't be drinking it for no reason. Um, it's, it's kind of how it makes your body feel, but I actually stick away from Powerades and Gatorades and all that kind of thing. Basically with water? You water, you know, water, water, water is the, is the best water. way to get your, to get, yeah. keep your body going. Yeah. Yeah. Good point, good question. Okay, and all the other questions were covered, Nigel? Yeah, they were repeats of other yes. stuff we've covered. Okay, yeah. good. Which is good. That good. is, yeah. it is. We've covered them. Well, thank you very much <laughs> for coming in. That's been fantastic. So if we can give our people... <laughs> Thank you. So, okay, um, now we've got some Nick coming up and Nick So, thank you. Cheers. Water, water, always. Water. <laughs> I've got one. Here we go. Oh, not that one. I think that's one. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Yes. So, engineer and uh, at McCulloch's Engineering here but a past participant in Energy Breakthrough. So yeah. who was that with? Uh, I went to Damascus College actually oh, right. in Ballarat, okay. so yes. a little yeah. bit a little bit from here. Yeah. But um, uh, 98 was the first year that I went to Maribor, so 29 yeah. years this year, so I've been doing yeah. it for a little while. And, you have. Um, done a few other races throughout Australia as well over those mm. years. Mm. So you're pretty familiar with uh, Energy Breakthrough, but also probably familiar with a few other people will have seen you around the traps yeah. as well. Yeah, yep, I've been involved with the EV for a few years now. So. Yes. So, um, one of the things with um, RACV pulling out, um, we've been able to, well, we've taken on the, the task of working through the scrutineering um, aspect of yeah. it, which is, is a challenge. And so you and Tim, Tim White from Bendigo Senior, um, are taking this on. So, a yeah. few things. What do you think you would like to look at from teams and the vehicles this year? So yeah, absolutely. Look, look, we really like clean and tidy is the first oh, thing right. from a scrutineering okay. point of view. So so when a vehicle comes through, 
if we open it up and have a look and all the edges are taped up, all the cable ties are cut off, everything's nicely guarded, that's the very first thing we look at and from there on in we generally get a feel of how the rest of the vehicle is going to be. If you do those things really well, yeah. you'll have a really good time going through. And they're very simple things that you can do. It doesn't take long to, yeah. to tape up all the edges. And it's things you should do anyway so that you mm -hmm. don't end up with sharp edges cutting you yeah, and like that. Yeah. that. That's one of the main things. Um, some of the other things we look for is uh, enclosed wheels is one of yes. the things that yeah. came in in the last few years. Yes. So having, yeah. having the wheels closed okay. off from the actual mm -hmm. rider. Um, it's important if you do have an accident or, or if, you, um, if you happen to have crash. a puncher yeah, yeah, or you puncher. crash, yes. um, that your hands can't touch the tyres. It's just, just a way of preventing that and it's something that's easily done. There's lots yeah. of materials um, that you can use to make those wheel guards. They can be made of core flute, which you guys will all have used, or they can be made of composites mm -hmm. like carbon and Kevlar. So, mm -hmm. so they're, they're a couple of things that we look at straight away when you first bring the vehicle yes. in and open it up. Yep. They're the first couple of things that we'll look at. Yes. And they're part of the handbook too. They are. They're, I mean, they're, all, they're rules the, that are in the there, handbook. But, yeah, exactly. You know, it's also a reminder because yeah. often there's so much in the handbook and you have to manage just to read through. It takes a bit of time. Yeah, Good exactly. On you. Okay, so uh, looking forward to next year, what do you think you'll adapt? First of all, start in the HPV. Yeah. Because most teams have got yeah. an HPV. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So we've had a bit of a look. Uh, Tim and I have caught up recently and done a bit of a draft uh, rule proposal for 2019. Mm. And some of the things that we've looked at um, in that is the roll bar rule. So the, the pedal pre in South Australia sort of yes. set, set the national rule set. Um, and they have a rule that uh, limits the head clearance to 20 millimetres, but you must have a piece of foam in there mm. above your head. Um, so that's something that we're looking at adapting. It takes away any of the need to measure head clearances and things like that because it's already taken care of. Um, so that, that's a big one, and, mm. it, and it will mean that nobody would have to change their vehicles Good. drastically to do it. Yeah. You'd have to stick a piece of foam in. Right. If you already meet the current EV rules, you would, you yes. would meet well, that rule. Well, that's right. right. So it's, yeah. and, and you would be able to go and race in, yep. in other if you, wanted yep. to, if you wanted to do so. Yep. Um, one of the other rules that we're looking at is the turning circle mm. on vehicles. Mm. At the moment, there's a, there's a test that goes left and right around the big circle. Some mm. of you guys would have all done it before, where you have to go left and right, so it's mm. heads nodding <laughs> Um And sometimes that can be a little bit tedious if you have to do it a few times, because it can be a bit painful. So we're looking at making the turning circle into a manoeuvrability test like they do do in other events. So having some witch's hats set up yes. so that you go in and out of the witch's hats a couple of times, mm. and then you do your brake test, and then that's kind of it. So it's a lot easier to understand for the riders and it's a lot quicker process. Um, and we still would recommend that you do have the 10 metre turning circle, which we mm, have now. Yeah, mm. um, but as long as you can manoeuvre in, in and out of those, then, right. then that will be kind of... And particularly in my area, the triathlon, that is fantastic, yeah. you know, the manoeuvrability. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it's your driver yeah. skills coming in as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the turning yeah. circle is probably more important for the yes. triathlon because you do you have do to do have a, to a do complete U-turn. Yeah. Yeah. But yep. still, yeah, yep. great. Um, another little one um, in, in race terms, which we've discussed, is, is glasses. We often, mm. with the EB, um, has spent a long time looking in windows and people trying mm. to track down riders that have glasses on or, or they're fogged up at the new guys or ridden at night time, they fog up at night time and things like that. Mm. Um, the standard sort of rule across the other countries races is that um, as long as you have a fully enclosed windscreen and there's no holes in there, then you don't need to wear the glasses. Oh, so if, you, right. if you've got a fully enclosed vehicle, you need to wear gloves still, but you don't need the glasses. Right. But as soon as you cut holes or anything yes. like that, then you yes. do need to wear holes. them because things can come yes. inside. So, yeah. so with the wheels now fully enclosed and no yeah. holes in the windscreen, the, the chance of things coming inside is sort of diminished. Minimal. Yeah. 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 yeah, so that, that's but another that's little one, which, which is a bit of an easier one for us yeah. to manage from, yes. from a pit point of view yeah. as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other little one is, uh, is rear wheel steer vehicles. We actually had mm -hmm. um, sort of canned the rear wheel steer vehicles a few years ago, as at, as at most races. Um, Tim and I discussed that there was a bit of a, a benefit in rear wheel steer in some fashions in terms of innovation because it allows you to try yeah, lots of different things with, yeah, with drive yeah, lines yeah. and things so it may not affect many teams and there mightn't be many people willing to have a go at it mm. um, but if you did want to do rear wheel steer it would need to be submitted prior like the design would need to be su okay. submitted for approval right. um, but, it's, but it's something that you consider that could come back in. Yeah. All right. okay. Perhaps, you know, some of the uh, older kids who might be interested in sort of developing yeah. more, who have got the expertise both at school and the school facilities, Absolutely. because a lot of um, schools do have to purchase ready-made ones. Exactly. Okay, exactly. good. Oh, quite a few things. So the EEVs, did yep. you have... Any yeah, there's, there's, there's a couple of main things with the EEVs. Mm. Um, the first one we did discuss, and this is, this is only discussion at this stage, yeah. is, the, is the fire extinguishers. 
Um, we do find from time to time the fire extinguishers float around inside the vehicles because they're quite heavy at almost a mm -hmm. kilogram. Um, and in, in racing cars and things like that, they have quite a smaller sort of aerosol type fire extinguisher. Yeah. So we're looking into that, but that's something we need to discuss with mm. the sort of the relevant people. Um, the, the biggest one in EEVs that we're going to discuss are batteries. Um, we're going to look this year and monitor closely sort of battery usage yes. um, and determine whether the amount of batteries at the moment available is sort of acceptable or whether there's too much or not enough. Um, and ju just to even it all up a little bit so that we encourage people mm. to still participate in EEV um, without having to go and spend a lot of money on new things. Yes. Yep. So they're the main, they're the main the couple of things. Yeah, good. So this year, so you'll be able to engage schools in yeah. sort of thinking about this next term, yep. uh, not, not next year. So how are you sort of thinking about doing that? As yeah, they, yeah. You know, as they're coming in for scrutiny, and that's a bit tight, isn't it? To sort of yeah, that's that. right. Look, we're, we're looking mm -hmm. at, um, I mean, this year's rule book's kind of already, mm -hmm. already been set, already. but... Um, in terms of stuff for next year, we're actually looking at engaging um, schools, constructors, builders, mm. all together, and and getting some input and thoughts on right. on what we um, what we what believe are, are good rules. Yeah. Um, but it's good to get some input from the schools, and probably in the past we might not have necessarily done that so much. But it's good to be able. I mean, you guys are the ones that have to build mm. the vehicles to go into the event, so. Sure. Um, it's good to get some feedback as well as to whether some of the rules are necessary or unnecessary. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we'll consult with everybody to make sure we get a sort of a happy meeting as much yes. as we can between everybody. And, mm -hmm. and to give the schools a little bit of ownership as well on the yeah. rules, oh, you know, that's that, right. that, it's, well, that they're, they're the building. Having to provide yeah. the vehicle, aren't they? Exactly. So um, actually doing that, is it going to be sort of a survey type of thing? You know, well, we haven't fully discussed that yet. We, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. thinking we may potentially try and get together to have a meeting, right. um, if, okay. if it's practical, or we could do something on these lines also yes. as well. So, yeah, that um, could, that there's, could be useful. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of people that could be involved and probably should be involved yes. in, in this, yeah. and there'll be lots of people who want to. So yeah. um, we'll certainly discuss that, and we can, we'll chat to people at the, at the at EB the, this year as well, yeah, yeah and, and get, get some get some ideas some and yeah. maybe give some new ideas that yeah. they've had difficulty with. Definitely. Yeah, good. So... We're down to about three weeks, so three things technically we can look yeah. at, you know. Yeah, look, there's a few important you know. things, obviously, to make these mm -hmm. things go well and, and work properly. Um, the first thing, as we heard earlier, is testing, testing, uh, testing, testing. Uh, Test every single thing as much as you can. Yeah. I mean, as you've, you've got three weeks now, so assuming the vehicles are sort of built and at the stage well, right. where they're getting ridden around yeah. and everything's getting checked. I saw a sort of a nod there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so testing. Testing is very important <coughs> to make sure everything works. You've got a, you've got this sort of shiny new vehicle that you've mm. got there, but it obviously all needs to work. Ruin um, testing, yeah, yes. exactly. In, in terms good. of the vehicle running well, there's three really important things that yeah. I've always sort of, when people have asked this, that yes. I've always said. The first one are wheels. The wheels obviously are the rotating part that roll you on the road. So yeah. make sure, get all of your wheels out and make sure they all spin true, that they're straight and that the bearings are all good in them. If you need to put new bearings in them, I'll do it now. Yes. Don't, don't yes. wait until you get there and find out that one seized up. So right. wheels are really important. The drive line, so make sure your chain is really smooth, that everything runs really well, that there's not lots of noises. Now's the time to be able to look through and find those things before mm. you get mm. to the event. And probably the most critical thing of this whole thing is a wheel alignment. So making sure that your two front wheels are parallel to each other. Um, there's any, any drag there can cause a massive Maybe. amount of speed loss. It, it only takes a couple of millimetres of yes. um, incorrect mm -hmm. alignment there to cause you a lot of tyre wear mm. and it slows you down a lot. So you're working a lot harder than you need to. Mm. So those, those three things I think you're calling. That's right. And that's important for these kids here because they're the ones who are riding the vehicle and yeah. they'll be able to test it yeah, because exactly. the manager usually can't. So it's up exactly. to all you kids to be able to do that in the next good feedback to um, the manager yes. for the next three weeks. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Absolutely. Did we have any questions though, Nigel? We might have. We have actually. Yes. We've had quite a few. Um, so let me let me roll with a few of these. Um, Geelong, uh, the uh, team manager down in Geelong. Hi Geelong, welcome. Um, they want to know, are external wheel guards needed? So wheel guards on the external. So if you do have the, a vehicle that doesn't have the wheels inside the body, um, you would need to have some sort of plastic covering over the spokes. 
on the outside. The inside still needs to be sealed off from the mm -hmm. rider. And in terms of outside, the wheel, plastic wheel guard is to prevent you from um, basically anyone else being able to contact okay. your wheels yes. or your spokes. Yeah. 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 So just a simple core fluid or plastic. Right. Okay. I'm going to be asking you next for a question, audience. Uh, but the next one is from Wanthaggy. So Alistair down in Wanthaggy wants to know, are external LEDs, so external lighting on the vehicle, is that encouraged, discouraged? Uh, what's your sort of opinion on that? Okay. External lighting is great. External lighting is fine. Um, as long as there's no forward-facing red LEDs, so as to confuse yeah. with the tail yeah. light. So yeah. um, if you want to put some lights on the top or whatever so that you can denote your vehicle from the others, that's fine, as long as they're not, um, there's no red ones facing yeah. forward, that the red ones all face yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this was an anonymous question, so I'm not sure, but hello Mr. Anonymous or Mrs. Anonymous. Is that uh, for next year, are you thinking that 10 metres is going to be a recommendation or, or a hard... Yeah, so we're thinking that 10 metres will be a recommendation, but we'll set a guideline in terms of how far the witches' hats will be apart so that you'll be able to test it at school to make sure your vehicle can yes. meet that. So, so yeah, basically it'll be a recommendation, but you'll still have to be able to complete the test. Yeah, yeah. Coming back to this year, um, Gels Park Primary School, um, they haven't made any modifications to their vehicle at all this year. Um, do you imagine they'll be marked down because they haven't had to change, and obviously they've participated before, their vehicle's still in good condition, do you think they'll actually be okay? Yeah, um, in, in terms of scrutineering score, you won't be marked down for it. You may be in design and construction, because mm -hmm. obviously one of the questions is, is it a new vehicle or not? Mm. Um, in terms of scrutineering, as long as it meets all of the rules and you've read this year's book and it, it meets all the current rules, then you certainly won't be marked down for having an older vehicle in scrutineering. Mm. And that is the issue, because a lot of schools can't afford to buy a new yeah. bike each year, that's so right. they're going to be using it again. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And look, as long as it's updated, updated. to meet the current rules, yes. then, then it's mm. um, certainly fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be reasonable and practical in this situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, probably to respond to um, Gels Park, if, you, if your students are very well versed in understanding the vehicle and what makes it work and the materials used, they'll still score score pretty highly in that yeah. area. Yeah, in um, one more question before we throw to our live studio audience here. So excited we've got a live studio <laughs> audience, it's so nice. Um, this person's from Maribyrne and they've said, are there any bad things to say at scrutineering? So just oh, where people right. should just not close so their mouth and just... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I guess, um, yeah. I guess with scrutineering, the, the idea is that we're trying to make it a, a stress-free kind of mm -hmm. environment. Um, so, we, you know, basically we're trying to avoid any conflict really, and maybe in the past it's, it's always, and I know what it was like when I was at school, it was always yeah. quite nervy going through scrutineering because it's the, the part where this vehicle, yes. you know, you spent all year making is going That's through right. to be inspected by someone else to tell yeah. you whether it's okay or not. And then you've got... X amount of time. Yeah, to that's right, up, to, get, to get it fixed you know. up. So in terms of things to say and what not to say, you probably probably shouldn't say that your roll bars are made of like a water pipe or something like that. But <laughs> it, as long as, as, long as the, look, the vehicle will be checked by scrutineers. I mean, there's not really a right or wrong thing to say. Mm. Um, we will certainly, Tim and myself, will be engaging with the, with mm. the students as well. And we'll be walking around and, and having a chat. And look, we're, we're more than happy for you to tell us all of the things that you've done. So um, like I said, there's not really a right or wrong thing to say. But um, certainly we try to keep it a, a kind of a stress-free yes. environment so um, there shouldn't be too much conflict. Right. Mm -hmm. And basically you're at, at the idea of the scrutineering is to be a safe vehicle yeah. ultimately, isn't it? For right. everybody, not that's only right. for, you, for the team but for yeah. everybody else. Yeah, well, that's so, what we're about. And that's what yeah. all the detail in the handbook is all about so yeah. it's really following those things. Yeah, we're not we're not about sort of being strict and telling you how to, how to do things. It's, yes. it's basically about making sure that what you present it's um, yeah. is safe, safe and that, that you know that you guys enough. yeah that's yeah. right you guys will be safe riding and the other yes. participants will be safe yeah. as well so that's, right. that, that's basically yeah. what it's about um, any questions from in here we've had some a few mm. any of the teachers got a question no they're, they're feeling yeah. confident yeah. Well, they're confident okay I've, uh, yes. I've had one more through while we've been chatting and it was um, who uh, obviously previously all done by the RSCB or scrutineering, so who will be part of your team? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so we've, got a, we've actually got a really good team assembled this year, um, and they've all got a lot of experience in terms of 
building vehicles. Yeah. They've all been part of a team with maybe a school or a community team. Mm. Um, so we've got people coming in this year who know the vehicles. They know exactly what the RACV guys have done it for a long time, so mm. they knew quite well. But none of them had sort of been involved in the event. So, so I think this year we've got a good um, coverage of people who know, you know, why you built these things the way you built them. Yes. Um, and I think that'll make things uh, a lot better in it. And the uh, the back and forward talk will be a lot yes. better between the teams because they'll be able to talk trucks and, and yeah, everyone yeah. will understand what's going on. So good. Yeah, that that should be more comforting too for the managers who yeah. know, feel okay. We can yep. respond and have a chat and. Yeah. And yeah, you know where we're coming from. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. That's good. Okay. Well, we've had a couple more questions oh, yeah. um, from Girton and from a, another person as well who we hasn't said their name, but thanks. Actually, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'll answer these ones, though, because they're actually trial questions, not scrutiny oh. questions. And this was discussed at a meeting yesterday, so Mick might not be fully up to the speed because it's been on holidays which is awesome to have holidays. So first question was actually about the helmet tags. We did helmet tags on the uh, riders last year to give people individual lap times. Um, we trialed it last year. It was pretty good, but um, we've decided not to go ahead with that this year. It became a bit cost prohibitive. And uh, with a few changes in sponsorship, that was something we wanted to park for this year. Um, so no helmet tags this year. Um, we'll just keep things pretty pretty short and simple. But one thing we are maintaining is the speed traps. So the 60 km an hour speed traps around the, around the circuit, um, that will still be imposed and enforced as it was uh, last year, which I think is a great uh, initiative to make sure that um, the rule that we have that says you can't exceed 60 km an hour is yep. enforceable, I suppose. Yes. So um, yeah, they're just a couple of updates for those people who have um, tuned in. So. But uh, yeah, any any closing sort of remarks ahead of this year? Uh, well, no. I'm just wondering, did did anyone here have any general question that they would like to put up? Because you have got, um, you know, with the trial, we've been specific here about particular things. But there, we've had a couple about the trial. No. Okay. Well, we're all ready to go. Three weeks. So. Looking forward to it. A few changes, and you'll see some different faces around, um, obviously, this year with scrutineering and uh, different other aspects. But um, look, thanks to Latrobe for hosting us this morning. Um, thank you very much for being able to use this. Thank you for Victory for coming along and being a live audience. That was great. Thank you to all those schools, too, who have joined us now and probably will join us later. Um, online so that that will be great and I think any more questions certainly send them through if you've come up with them and thought about them and then oh right let's have a, a question I've got we'll um, certainly follow up and uh, have an answer for them so catch you all in three weeks thank you well done so is it